You can't tell me this doesn't look cool. Hello my gaming family and welcome to another video. The huge problem in gaming today, especially when it comes to community, is that everything revolves around a couple of huge developers, a couple of let's say sounding names, game franchises, therefore too little attention is paid to indie developers and their products actually. I personally enjoy playing indie games. When you watch and play some game that comes from small studio, you can actually see and feel all their effort, which sometimes, unfortunately, does not get the attention it deserves. To be honest with you, I played some indie titles that, in my opinion, in some segments, if not in only some cases, are better than some AAA names that comes from huge studios. In today's video, we will talk about one such game that in my opinion can easily be one of the best looking, most ambitious and with most potential in the game of this year. So without further ado, let's hop in. Ripout is an online co-op horror first person shooter set in let's say close future in an abandoned spaceship. Now first of all, the huge plus of this game, at least for me, is this co-op segment. Dead feature in games is not that rare today, but you don't come across them that often. More often, we can see single player or multiplayer games and from time to time on the rather appears some good, worth paying attention co-op game. Besides single player campaign, you will be able to play rip out with your friends in co-op mode up to 3 players. And guys, it's so much fun, trust me. Next really important and really interesting feature this game possess is procedurally generated levels. Now, I personally prefer to play open world games, I'm not a huge fan of linear ones, limited space and stuff, but when it comes to this game, it's completely different. Every time you start level, every time is different. For example, it happened to me that I go through a level and meet only one or no enemies at all, but due to my carelessness, unfortunately I die. Yup, I accidentally stepped on electricity on the floor and died. Sounds stupid, I know. Anyway, the next time I started the same level, it was completely different. Enemies were everywhere, all kinds of them. I struggled to finish the level I almost completed so easily a few minutes earlier. When you don't have an open world in game, but some kind of linear levels or limited space, procedurally generating is highly welcome feature. Not only does it give a certain depth to the game itself or it prevents the game from becoming boring quickly, but it adds a dose of uncertainty, a completely new level of difficulty and in a way turns an ordinary action game into a roguelite game actually. Now I mentioned the fact I died from stepping on the electrics on the floor. Guys, the people from the Pet Project games try their best to make rip out a really difficult game at all times and for every wrong step you will actually pay a price. The environment is really hostile, in addition to a very dark environment, dangerous mutants that can appear suddenly and out of nowhere, and a creepy atmosphere that constantly keeps you tense, there are spots like electrical circuits, toxic pans, hot steam coming out of pipes on the wall etc which can kill you instantly. Yeah, why would we have dangerous mutants only, which in addition to being able to instantly destroy us, can constantly modify themselves and get even stronger, when we can have the entire environment being one big enemy and thus get a whole another level of difficulty to the game. Yeah, why not? Jokes to aside, if you don't like to struggle a little or a little bit more in the game, skip this one, but if you like challenges, then you will find a rip out a really challenging game both for your skills and for, uh, let's say, courage. Anyway, when I mention developers, the team that stands behind this title is Pet Project Games, a relatively small team made from less than 20 people. Taking into account the size of the team, the seriousness of the project, the very appearance of the game, all the features and everything else, the work they have done so far is really fascinating and worthy of prize. The publisher is well known 3D Realms and if they recognized the potential in the game and accepted to be its publishers, it somehow gives me some sense of certainty that Ripout has a chance to be a really worthwhile investment of our time and money. When it comes to the story, well, uh, to be honest with you guys, if you are looking for an in-depth story or something mind-blowing, then honestly you better look somewhere else. But, if you can easily ignore that segment and you are mainly focused on gameplay itself or maybe some other segment of the game in general, then stay here, you will love this game at the end, I'm more than sure. So the story will take us to the year of 2084. You actually wake up on seemingly abandoned spaceship as one of the last surviving Earth soldiers. 
it seems that the scientists screw up a little and after genetically engineering a powerful but dangerous bioweapon to fend off alien invaders, humanity actually falls victim to its own creation. Now the fate of humanity rests in your hands, and yes, will you be the hero or will human race end up consumed by the essential cell, it's all up to you and your skills of course. Let's listen briefly to what he said about the story at the very beginning of the game. In 2050, humans reach beyond the solar system, competing for territory, resources, and exclusive discoveries. Within a decade, we run into alien opposition, a race called the Spiral. The merciless corporate national wars are replaced by ruthless wars between species. Earth governments unite against a common enemy for as long as it benefits the economy. CEA, Corporate Earth Alliance, and EIF, Earth Interplanetary Forces are formed. Close to defeat, human scientists develop the cell. A microorganism that can regenerate tissue and meld it with cybernetic parts, keeping soldiers in battle longer. The cell 1.0 mutates uncontrollably. Mutations spreading throughout Earth and space wage war with humanity and aliens alike. By 2080, humanity loses the war and begins evacuating millions with starbound ships headed for an undisclosed sanctuary. You awake in 2084 as one of the last surviving sentient weapon soldiers. Without orders or information, you must investigate what has happened and try to survive. Okay, so the story sounds okay, nothing special, but it's acceptable. Considering that the story is not the main aspect of this game and that the focus is on gameplay, the event story can actually follow other segments. When it comes to gameplay, that's the segment where this game actually shine. First of all, the overall feel is incredibly good. Everything looks and feels so smooth and fluid. Every movement, aiming, shooting, controlling of your pet, literally everything is so fluid. I'm not that much into FPS games, I prefer RPGs, and when it comes to the FPS games, I play Warzone and Destiny 2 sometimes. And when it comes to Rip Out, at first I didn't expect it to be that smooth, but I'm so glad I was wrong. Animations are super cool. The main silhouette in this game is as you obviously can notice, your living pet gun, and the animations related to it are amazing. First of all, you can actually pet your pet gun. And guys, it feels so good. Then you have some interesting animations like reloading some weapons where your pet uh, with his legs removes your empty mag, replace it with full one for example etc. When we mentioned living pet gun, that is actually trademark of this game and you will probably revolve your playstyle around it. So how it works? Besides it looks super cool, you can actually use it in various ways. For example, you can send your pet to directly attack your enemy and it can actually do an incredible amount of damage. You can also send it to attack specific body parts of your enemy to remove some upgraded attachments. You can send it to hack some doors or cameras and most important, you can use your pet to catch critters. Why is this so important and who are critters? When you go through levels and you explore around, you will constantly notice small creatures wandering around doing absolutely nothing. Those are critters, they can't harm you alone, but if some enemy comes around, they will instantly jump and attach on them, making those enemies much much stronger. What you want to do when you come across them actually, is to use your pet gun to catch them and attach them to yourself instead. Once attached on you, critters will give you special ability or special weapon on your left shoulder. That can be a laser gun, grabbing hand, stinky bombs, which are really powerful attachment if you ask me, shield and much more. In case you already have some attachment and you don't want to change it, my advice is you should try to kill critter on the first side before they attach on some enemy. Bonus advice, use your melee weapon in order to kill them, save your ammo because every bullet in rip out is so important. Same as with critters, there is a couple of different enemies in the game. I can tell that the enemy variety is huge, no it's not. You can come across about 10 different types of enemies throughout the game, but their ability to modify themselves or their body parts to be precise in fact makes up for the lack of variety in that segment. 
So some of the enemies you will come across most of the time are zombies. You all know who are zombies, so no need for explanation, zombies in space are still zombies. Next one is spacemen, which are actually almost the same as zombies. Soldiers are most common enemy, and you will probably more often come across them while they patrol around. They are dangerous enemies, but not that hard to kill. Problem can be when they don't patrol alone, and in case you come across two soldiers at the same time and plus to that you have some critters running around, the best thing you can do is to run away. The next most common enemy in the game besides soldiers are swarmers. These dog looking mutants are easy to handle one on one, but you don't want to stuck with a group of swarmers in some cold space or in some corner. Ranger is a really interesting mutant. As weapons they use stinky bombs and if you remember I mentioned earlier that you can also get stinky bombs by catching specific critters and those are really powerful weapons so you must be really careful when fighting rangers. Also besides stinky bombs they can actually teleport themselves. And yup guys they can disappear and jump behind you in a second so if they suddenly disappear in the middle of the fight open four eyes and watch your back. Evaders are creepy, ugly mutants whose walking can remind you on Spider Walk from the Exorcist movie. Fortunately, you will not come across them so often, but when you do, be ready for their quick movements. They are really agile creatures capable of covering a large distances in a short time, and their zigzag moving can give you a lot of trouble, so if you have slow reflexes, I wish you all the luck. Heavies and modulators are almost the same types of mutants like zombies and spacemen. They are huge, massive, tanky mutants who can take tons of damage. When you fight modulator or heavy, be ready to use tons of bullets, your pet gun, your attached special weapon and hope there are no critters around. Bonus tip, don't let them get close to you, they are huge and slow, but if they hit you, you are going down. Those are some most common ones, the enemies you will most often fight during your playthrough, but in the upcoming period, more enemies will be added to the game definitely. Let's not forget the final boss. Yup guys, there will be final boss in the game actually, and it's huge, enormous, powerful and dangerous, so be ready to die an infinite amount of times before you manage to defeat him. When it comes to weapons, beside couple of different weapon types, you will constantly come across different parts and weapon upgrades, which you can use in your ship to unlock new weapons and upgrade them. Same goes with armor, unfortunately you can see how your armor looks only in your ship on the armor station. This is first person game and there is no other way to see the look of your armor. Actually, your teammates will be able to see how your armor look when you play with them. When we mentioned co-op, it seems that this is the most important feature in this game, the most emphasized one and to be honest, for a reason. As I already mentioned, people love to hear that one game have a co-op mode and when you, as someone who loved that feature, hear that some game actually revolves around co-op, you must be happy. People from Pet Project Games did a great job when it comes to co-op and rip out, considering they included scaling difficulty. What that means is that difficulty can turn even weakest monsters in forces to be reckoned with if you're playing in larger squads. It won't be the same if you play alone or with one or two friends, in terms of difficulty. When it comes to atmosphere and ambience in the game, it's needless to say that this is the right game for this time of year. If you are looking for a perfect game to play with your friends on Halloween, look no further, you are in the right place. Constant dark atmosphere, lack of light, limited use of flashlight, spooky noises in the background, jump scares all the time, the atmosphere in Rip Out will constantly keep you tense, you will often get goosebumps and if you are not used to the element of surprise, get ready to jump sometimes. Visually this game looks really good considering the size of the team that stands behind it. The overall look of the game, animations, everything related to visuals. In my opinion, Rip Out is definitely the most ambitious indie game and also indie game with most potential in 2023 when it comes to that segment. Ok, when we know all the important things, let's summarize everything. Does Rip Out have a potential to be a really good co-op shooter? Definitely yes. Is it perfect? Far from that. Considering that this game is in early access stage, you will probably come across some bugs in the game, hopefully nothing game breaking, but here and there you will notice some irregularities. Good thing is that people from PPG won't stop working on the game and besides adding more content they will keep fixing the game through patches and updates. Gameplay is good, it looks good, 
It feels good, smooth and fluid, fights are intense and unpredictable, levels are procedurally generated, which is big plus, difficulty scales depending on the size of the team, which is another big plus, co-op mode is highly welcomed, all in all, Ripa would have my recommendation definitely. As far as prices are concerned, the game will cost $25, which is totally fair and real for an indie game. And if you think that $25 is too much for this type of game, keep in mind that there are much worse games out there that cost much more. I will definitely keep tracking the progression of the game and I will inform you of everything I learn in future. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and like this video so it can reach more people. I really hope you enjoyed, that would be all and I'll see you in the next one.